Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Yindia digital microscope with 7 inch LCD display. So, this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So, it says support for 12 languages, 8 LED lights, brightness adjustable, external professional supplementary lamp, adjustable angle screen. Here's some examples of where you can use it. It says hobby, engineering, education, production, medicine, other inspections. Here's the photo resolutions, video resolutions. Let's take a look at this. So it comes with a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. It's like this is an instruction manual. It talks about the different parts here. Here are the part descriptions. It talks about the fill light, plug and remote control. Here are some specs. I'll go through a couple of these here. Maximum video is 1080p FHD. Lens optical size is quarter inch. Photo resolution is 12, 10, 8, 5, and 3. Video format is AVI. Focus mode is manual. Image format is JPEG. PC resolution is 1280 by 720 at 26 FHD. PS. This works with Windows or Mac. And here's some other specs here. Power consumption is 1.95 watts. So these are the different menus and modes. So I'm going to go over these here. So here's a part. Uh, I don't know if that's a base. Here's the remote and it has a cord on it. So here's the microscope and the screen. CD-ROM. Micro USB cord is the base. Appears to be made out of aluminum. Microscope calibration ruler. And here's the arm it goes on. There's a rack and pinion here to move it up and down. It has a lock in the back. This is the mount for the camera. There's a screw here. Looks like this is some rubber to go in here pad against the microscope. So let me get this set up. So this is going to screw into the base here. So I'll thread this in as far as it will go. So you can see that is backwards. So I'll turn it to where I want it to be and then I can tighten this nut down against the base. So that would be a jam nut and that will tighten that in place. Okay, so I'm going to get that as tight as I can get it with my fingers. So now this is very sturdy here. Then we have this piece of rubber here. I'm not sure if that should go on here first. Let's try it. Just going to stick this in temporarily. Okay, so that's going to clamp around this area. So I'll loosen these nuts up here, or these bolts. I'll put this rubber around here and then I'll slide it down in there. Kind of bunched up there. Let me do that again. So I feel like this could be a tiny bit shorter. So I'm just going to snip off just a tiny bit of this, maybe about that much. Okay, so I've snipped off that much. So I'll try this again. So now you, you can see I have a little bit of a gap there, but that's fine. And I want to make sure these are completely retracted here, so they're not hanging up on the gasket. Okay, that's nice there. So you can see it's not bunched up anywhere there. So I'll rotate it till it's straight. And now I can tighten these here. Shouldn't have to tighten these very tight. I'm sure I can like lift this up now. Yeah. So this screen will pivot. So I have the power cords here. Let me get these. So you do need to supply your own USB chargers. So I'm going to plug this in here in the monitor. Let me back up just a little bit. There we go. And then we have a cord coming off of it that's going to plug into the base like so. And then the main USB cord is going to plug in to the monitor here and this will plug into power. I'm just going to use this USB charger. I'll plug that in. Okay, peel this plastic off here. We can see the power light is on and the micro USB port is right here on the side. So I do need to make sure I don't tilt this backwards so I don't hit that. And I didn't really show the bottom, but it has these big foam feet on it. So this is to put on the end here if you're using this without this base. So hold the power down to turn it on. So we can see the lights turned on. So these are very bright. Oh, so it looks like it is working now. So I'll put my finger under here. So I'll do a quick demonstration. I'll turn my light off here. So I have my finger under here and I can lower this down and that's kind of a large adjustment. So I'm turning this here. So I'll loosen this up. I can move this to get it close and then I'll tighten this down. So I've got my finger there. I'll tighten it down in the back and then I can use this on the front to do a more fine adjustment like so. So here's the little calibration card here. Let's see if we can focus in on that. So we can see that, here's a little scale. So it says the SD card is not in there, so I'm going to put the SD card in next. Okay, so that's in. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit, and I'll come back and I'll go over the features in detail. Okay, so I had this plugged in, and this does have a battery in it, so I've charged it up. So if I unplug this here, this will be running off battery power, and we have a little battery indicator. It's really small on the screen right here, but there's a battery indicator there. So that makes this really handy. You can take this outside and look at leaves or things like that with it. You don't have to bring your stuff inside necessarily, especially if you're looking at live bugs and stuff. If they get away, not a big deal. But I will plug it in just for now, and to turn on, we'll hold down this power button. On the back here, we have a knob to turn the light up and down, the two side lights. So those are positionable lights. And then on the main screen, we have three buttons here. We have up, okay, and down. Then we have photo, menu, and power. So if I press these buttons here, you can see this is moving. 
And that can cause focus problems, that can cause problems with blurriness when you're, say, trying to capture a picture. So that's why they included a remote here. So it may seem weird that they have a remote on something so easy to access, but the reason is, is to isolate vibration from this. So the remote has the same buttons as here. So I'll go over the interface on the screen. So let me get into that. So I'll press the M button for menu and we have the menu here. And then if we press down, we have resolution and then I'll press okay. And here we have the resolutions to supports and these are photo resolutions. So it's currently set to 12 megapixel, which is 4032 by 3024. And then you have lower resolutions here you can choose from, but it even goes down to three megapixel. So if I want to go back, I can hit the M button again. Now I'll go down, it has burst shooting on or off. So I'll leave that off. Next we have image quality. We have high quality, standard or economic. I'll switch that to high quality. I'm not sure if that'll make a big difference, but I just uh, pushed up and then hit okay to save that. Next we have sharpness, intensive, standard or soft. I'll leave it on standard, ISO, auto, 100 to 200, I'll leave that. Exposure compensation here. So I'll just leave that as the default. Then we have date tag, off date or date time. So if I hit M again, I'll go to this wrench here and then we can set the date and time. So I'll do that real quick. And we have the date format, so I'll do month, day, year. Okay, so I'll hit mode to get out of this. Automatic shutdown, three, five, or 10 minutes. Screen protection, three, five, and 10 minutes. We have language setting, English, Portuguese, simplified Chinese, Japanese, French, German, Korean, Italian, Dutch, Russian, Spanish, or Arabic. So lots of language options there. Light source frequency, 50 or 60 hertz. So I'm in the US, we have 60 hertz, so I'll change that. Line assist, so this will add some little lines on the screen. You can just turn that on or off. So we'll add a horizontal and vertical line formatting so this will format the card inside so if you put a new card in it's not a bad idea to format it so i have inserted a micro sd card default setting don't want to do that that'll reset to defaults and then we have the version information so if i hit the little camera icon here i can go into the video mode and if i hit the menu button there we have similar options so we can go to resolution here so i'll change it to 1080p fhd and we have exposure compensation and the date tag now the other settings are going to be the same so let's take a look at some things here so here i have a 20 bill. I'll put this under here. We'll look at the screen. So I can raise this whole thing up and down. Now it's easier with two hands because I loosened the one screw and it kind of fell down. So there's not really any dampening on it, but I can lower this quite a bit right down to the money if I want almost touching it. And then it's kind of hard to see here, but I can adjust this focus here and this is open on the front or back. So I will turn this until it focuses in like so. So now I can move this around. And this is very sensitive. If I move this up and down with my finger, this is pretty sturdy here, but I can flex it just a little bit and it will mess the focus up. So that's why it's nice having this rigid platform because while I can push on this, you're not going to push on it typically. And it's very sturdy. This mount is nice and stiff, so you can really lock it in. So here we have a picture of the money and we can hit the OK button on the remote and snap a picture. So let's look at another part here. Let's move it around, okay? Now I can zoom this out, I'll loosen the back. I'll lift it up all the way. And here we're zoomed further out. So the magnification on this is 50X to 1200X. So if this is up higher, it's going to be zoomed in less. If it's down closer, it's going to be zoomed in more. So switch to video mode and then I'll hit okay to start recording. So now we're recording video and here I have a coin. Put the coin down under here so I can zoom in on this. There we go. So we can see all the detail there. So I'm going to put this video in so you can see the native video I've captured with this. Guess we can throw the $20 bill back down in here if we want. Take a look at that. Okay, so now let's take another object. This is a microfiber cloth here. Now this is not focused because this is a little bit taller. I know it's only a tiny bit taller, but it makes a difference. This is very sensitive. So I'll adjust this focus now and you can see the fibers in this microfiber cloth. So it might work to have a little less light here. I don't know, let's turn the light down. That might help a little bit. Of course, a dark fiber is going to show up a little better. Let me see if I can get my t-shirt in here. So here you can see the fibers in my t-shirt. So let's look at this for a practical application. I'll raise this up a little bit. And here I have a razor knife. And let's say I want to inspect the edge of this. So I can place this under here 
and focus in and we can see the edge. You can see you can see the edge here, which probably means it's a little bit dull. So you could use this for inspecting things. So this isn't just necessarily as a fun toy or for research or things like that. This can also be used for purposes of inspection in a shop or a lab or things like that. This is the little calibration card that came with it. So I'm high up here, I can lower this really low. So here's 100 micron, here's 200 micron, 300 micron. So this has another feature here that you can connect it into a computer to view this image on a computer. So I'm going to unplug the power and I'll take this USB cable and I'll plug it into my computer. I'm plugging it into a MacBook. This will work with a PC also. I'm guessing this will work with other devices that will support USB webcams. And on my Mac, I'm going to open up QuickTime and I'll go to the file menu. I'll say new movie recording, but I need to turn this on and it will come up. It'll say mass storage, PC camera or charging mode. So you can just have this charge on your computer. You can use PC camera, which turns it into a webcam or mass storage will allow you to mount the SD card to a computer to download the files, or you can just take the card out. So I'll switch this to PC camera. I'll hit okay. Then I'll go here, it says general UVC. And now here we have it on the computer. So if you're a science teacher, a lot of classrooms have projectors in the room. You could hook this into a computer, bring it into something like QuickTime, and we'll make this full screen here. So now you have it full screen. We can come in here, a little SD card, and we raise this up. And here we can display this on a projector so the whole class could see. And of course you could record this on the computer too. So if you're on Windows, you can use the PC camera software. You could also hook this into a Raspberry Pi computer or any other device that supports regular webcams. There might be some TVs that support webcams. And if that's the case, you could plug this into it and display the picture right on it. So I forgot to mention there is a adjustment here on the side for the brightness of the backlight of this. So I have to say, I'm very impressed with this microscope. It's incredibly versatile. The fact that it has batteries in it means you can take it anywhere. I like that it's rigid, so it's easy to focus. Using the standalone, you can record pictures and video to the SD card, or you can hook it into a computer. And this is a huge upgrade from microscopes I grew up with. Those had a mirror that you had to direct towards the sun to light your slides, or it had a really weak flashlight in it. And it was really hard to focus, just hard to use. This thing's super easy to use. You just position the microscope above your object, and then it's super easy to focus in with this focuser. And another thing, back in the day, you'd look in there, you'd see something, tell someone else about it, they'd look in there, they wouldn't be able to focus in on it for whatever reason. That's not a problem here. You could have a dozen people look at this screen at the same same time. And if you wanted to, as I showed, you could hook this up to a computer and project it out so a whole classroom could see it. So I've always thought of a microscope as being more like lab equipment or something. But with this, I can take this camping with me, I can put this in our RV. When we're at a campsite, I could pull leaves and stuff and look at them right there. Don't have to have a computer hooked up to it or anything. Or if we go on a weekend hike, I can leave this in the car, collect things on our hike, come back and look at them. Super versatile. So that's the Yindia 7 inch LCD digital microscope. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.